Back here in Montgomery, a new national memorial is confronting racial terrorism. The decades of public lynchings of mostly black men, not only in the South, but to far corners of this country. It's a painful and, as I learned today, sometimes personal legacy that is often left out of the conversation about race, but no longer here in Montgomery. Just after dawn, pillars at the National Memorial for Peace and Justice stand as testament to America's traumatic past. The pain palpable. The memorial begins with this image, enslaved African families torn apart. Centuries of slavery giving way to decades of racial terror. The legacy of lynchings between 1877 and 1950, not just in the South, but across the country, is told here. The mindset was is that black people don't deserve uh, the dignity of even being a defendant. And they would be pulled out of jails, they would be pulled from law enforcement officers, and they would be brutalized in this way. Hey, Brian. Brian Stevenson created the memorial through his nonprofit, The Equal Justice Initiative. An attorney and author, he's dedicated his work to getting black men and women released from prison and death row. His book, Just Mercy, is being made into a movie. At the memorial, more than 4,000 names are engraved. The date of murder listed with the county where they died. The reasons chilling. Uh, drinking from a white man's well. Uh, Striking to protest low wages. Yes, exactly. If you're black and you go into town, or you do, there's so many ways that you can make a mistake that could cost you your life. For some visitors, the memorial revealing unexpected truths. There were very few families that were not impacted by this. Minutes later, it happened to me. My grandmother was a Houston, and there's a Houston here, and I don't, I have to call my father, but. It's astonishing to me how often that happens. Scanning the names on these columns, a familiar last name from Bedford County, Tennessee stands out, Houston. It was my paternal grandmother's maiden name. She was born in Tennessee. And the John Houston engraved before me, according to family, was likely related. That's yep. about phone calls to make. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Well, I know they'd be so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> but many of the names are unknown. And this is a, this wall, an acknowledgement to yes. those not documented, those you'll yes. never know. Uh, right. do, you ever, do you ever allow yourself to estimate what that number might be? It's thousands. It, it, you know, whether it's tens of thousands, the great historian Leon Litwick, Litwick wrote, how many thousands we'll never know. Josephine McCall's father, Elmore Bowling, was shot and killed on December 4th, 1947 in Lowndes County, Alabama. His name now memorialized. I was ecstatic. My father had never gotten any recognition, nor had we. We had never been recognized for the trauma that we suffered. Stevenson has visions of expanding, his team collecting soil samples from over 280 lynching sites in the country, a tangible memory for those who never received a proper burial. You know that the sweat of enslaved people are in that soil. Mm. You know that the blood of these lynching victims are in that soil. You know that the tears of those who were humiliated by segregation are in the soil. But what I love about it is we can gather this soil and we can still grow something. We can make that soil create new life. The memorial opened in April. It's already surpassed 200,000 visitors in a word powerful. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.